OpenAI has chat completion models. Let's see what are the things we cannot do with chat completion models. For example, chat completion models, there is no memory in that. Meaning, if you ask what's the capital of Japan, you will get the response as the capital of Japan is Tokyo. Then if you ask one more question, tell me something about that city. It says, I'm sorry, but you didn't specify which city you are referring to. It doesn't understand what we talked previously. That's a main issue. There is no memory concept in chat completions. Then chat completion models are really bad at computational task. For example, let's say you want to reverse the string open AI chat GPT. Let's see what the model says. So it says the reverse string of open AI chat GPT is O P E N A I. It added one more I. So that's a mistake. So this one didn't match with this one. So that's a mistake. So chat completion models are really bad at computational task. In chat completions, there is no way to process text files or Word documents or any other files directly. You have to process the files yourself, convert that text, then do chunking, which means you have to divide the documents into many smaller chunks. Then for each chunk, you have to create embeddings, which is a list of numbers. Then you have to do vector search by yourself. Meaning, let's say you are asking some question, you have to convert the question to some embeddings. Then you try to match which embeddings are very similar to your question. Then you pass those embeddings text as a context to the model. Then you get some response. And another problem with chat completions are they are not asynchronous, which means you have to ask some question. You have to wait for it while it's processing. Now let's look into what Assistance API can do. In Assistance API, it has context support, which means we can create a thread for each user. Thread is like a chat container. We can add many messages there and it will always persist. Meaning when the user logins again, we can pass the thread ID to retrieve what are the things they have discussed previously. And we can use those information as a context for the future questions they are going to ask, which is very helpful. And Assistance API, they have code interpreter, which means you can run any code. Whenever you ask some computational task, it uses code interpreter. Then it runs some Python code. It gets the answer. Then it uses that answer to explain something. So that's very helpful. Then it also has retrieval, which means it has a file support. You can upload files and you can ask questions from it, which is very helpful. Then function calling. Let's say you're asking what's to today's weather in Tokyo. Chat GPT models and other open AI based models it doesn't have any information on how to answer this question. For example, let's say you connect this with some databases and we can call our own functions and get some response. So it won't call the functions directly. It will ask you to call the function. It just provides what function to call and what arguments to pass. So they are very helpful. And Assistance API, there is a support for file handling, which means you can add up to 20 files in Assistance as a context. Which means, let's say you are asking some question within your company's data set, like data documents or reports. ChatGPT cannot answer this. But if you upload documents, then it will build embeddings for it. Like it will do all the vector search. Then it find relevant chunks. Then it uses that as a context and it expands everything there. So they are very helpful. And assistance API or asynchronous, which means you can run something and you don't have to wait for it. You can do something else like next things. And you can keep on checking if it's done after a few seconds. So they are asynchronous. And Assistance API, it can generate charts, graphs, and various file types. They are very helpful. So in this tutorial, we are going to focus more on threads and messages. In the previous session, we learned more about Assistant functions, which means we have learned all these things, like how to create things, how to list things, how to retrieve, then modify and delete. In today's session, we focus more on how to create threads and how to create messages, then retrieve, delete thread, list messages, list message files, 
then modify message. So those are the things we are going to learn today. So let's use some files. So I'm going to use this file, prompt engineering, open AI, API, PDF. I got it from their blogs, downloaded that as a PDF, and I have saved this. For this file, we are going to add this file to an assistant. That's why the purpose is assistance. Then you can see the response. Each file has some ID. Then it knows when it's created. Then what's the purpose? Assistance. Now we are going to create an assistant. So client.beta.assistance.create. Then you can pass some instructions, like what this assistant is going to do. And you can name some thing for this assistant. Here I named as data science tutor. Then what are the tools we can have this assistant access to? One is code interpreter, which means it can run code and it uses that results as a response. Then it also does a ret retrieval, which means it also processes the documents. It built vector databases there. And uh, whenever you ask some questions in the document, it do does a retrieval and answers. And the model we are going to use is GPT-4-1106 preview. And we are passing input data as a file ID. And you can, let's run this. And here you are getting the response. You can see it has an ID. Then file IDs, we have uploaded only one file. Then it has some instructions, then tools. Now we are going to create thread. So before creating thread, let's try to understand what are the things we can do with thread. So thread is like a conversation window. It's very similar to ChatGPT window. You can ask any question. That question is like a message. Then ChatGPT replies something that's also a message. So this container with thread is like a container that has all the messages. It has the conversation between the user and the assistant. So OpenAI recommends creating one thread per user as soon as they start using your product, which is very helpful. Then we can pass all user specific context plus file information to the conversation by creating messages. We will know how to create messages soon. Then a thread can handle unlimited number of messages, which is very helpful. You don't have to maintain the relevant context. OpenAI will maintain it automatically. Currently, it supports basic one like truncation. Whenever the conversation is very long, if it doesn't fit tokens, it will truncate and try to fit that into the token. So that's their basic support for now. But they do have plans to do more clever things there, which is very helpful in future. As we can see, we don't have to worry about context window because it's maintained by assistants. Then the down, downside for now is cost. There is no way to control the cost because there is no way for us to control what context to pass. So I think in future, we'll be having more control over there. But for now, Chad OpenAI controls this. We can see all the threads on OpenAI platform. If you go to OpenAI platform, there is a tab called threads. There you can see all the conversations that happened before. They are very helpful. So we, we will create some thread. Then we will see where to check this. So now I'm going to create some thread. It equal to client.beta threads.create that's it then we can check how thread looks model dump so it has id it will know when it's created there is no metadata it's empty then object this is thread now let's retrieve the thread and see how that looks like so to retrieve that thread we need thread id let's check that so my thread Client dot b dot threads dot retrieve and you can pass some thread ID. Then we can check how that looks like. My thread dot model dump. So we have retrieved the thread using retrieved method. You just pass the thread ID. Then we can also modify the thread. Currently, it's supposed only one thing. There is a metadata. We can add something to the metadata. That's what they call as modified. For example, let's say uh, the user wants to add something like feedback and you can pass that to metadata. Let's do that. My updated thread, class.update, 
then you can pass thread id thread id then metadata we can add something to the metadata let's say it's modified today and let's say the user is premium here we can set true okay i forgot to add brackets okay now let's check my updated thread dot model you can see we modified the thread by adding some metadata so that's all we can do here nothing else and we can delete the thread we can delete the thread by using its id so response client dot data dot threads dot delete thread id then we can check response dot model term so it says this thread is deleted so now so far we have learned what thread is like a container we can do few functions in the thread one is delete and modify retrieve and create that's all we can do there it's very simple now let's focus on messages so messages are mostly text optionally we can also include files in messages we will see how to do that then we add messages to a thread we should add messages to a thread thread is like a container it's empty we can add many messages there then all assistant responses are added to the thread as a messages so since thread is like a container we can also add some messages there and assistants also can add some messages we can retrieve messages from the thread which is very helpful we can retrieve the recent message and see what's happening there the first message zeroth index is the most recent message which is opposite to chat completion in chat completion the first message is the earliest message not the recent one which is the oldest one here it's a bit opposite first message zeroth index is the most recent message so messages can have annotations for example let's say you are doing some retrieval you will get some annotations like file citation what are the files it used to response or craft the message and whenever you is using code interpreter and if it's creating some files you will see a file path now let's create message but before creating message maybe let's create one more file and then we can add this file in a message it's very similar to in chat gpt you can load some files it's very similar to that so let's create since i deleted my previous thread i'm going to create one more thread i have created thread now i'm going to create a message in that message i will ask some question then i will ask also pass some file ids so let's do that you can pass thread id then role user then content so i'm asking explain like i am five what is a neural network then file ids just the file id file input dot id that's it we have created a message let's see how the message looks like so you can see the message has some id message all the message ids it starts with msg message thread starts with thread assistance starts with a s s t assist then currently this is not connected with any assistant that's why it's none then you have got content which has text annotations then this is the content we added then when it is added then does it have any file yes here there is a file id then restore metadata and other things like role now let's try to list all the messages thread messages client dot beta dot threads dot messages dot list then we can also pass how many message you want to list if you set limit equal to 5 it will list the recent five messages so currently we added just one message so you will see only one message there just one message a uh, message id looks good you can see the first id and last id are the same because it contains only one message this acts like a linked list whenever you have many messages you can see what's the next message by seeing the first id and last id 
and where it has more, which is like a next. We can also list all message files using client.beta.threads.messages.files. So client.beta.threads.messages.files.list. You can pass thread ID and you can pass message ID. You can retrieve the message ID from thread messages dot data zero, which is a recent message, then dot ID, then you will get some message ID and it lists all the message files. Currently it has only one file. You can see the ID of that file. So file starts with file. Then if you know the message ID and if you know the thread ID, you can retrieve the message. So our message is what is a neural network retrieved our message by message ID and thread ID. So you have to pass both. So since messages are connected to thread, we have to pass both. Now let's retrieve message file. So to retrieve message file, you can use client.beta.threads.messages.files.retrieve. Here you can pass message ID, thread ID and file ID and you will get the mess message object like ID and when it's created, object and message ID. Now let's say you wanted to modify the message by adding some metadata. You can do that by doing client.beta.threads.messages.update. So update is the function. There you can pass message ID and thread ID and you can modify the met metadata there. So that's very helpful. So far what we have done is we have learned all the functions related to messages and threads. They are very helpful. In our next session, we will learn more about runs. Runs connect threads along with assistants. There you can get some outputs. So currently threads and assistants are independent. We will be connecting together by using runs. We will see that in the next session. I hope this is helpful. Thanks.